We choose to go to the moon was the credit in Kennedy's rallying cry at Wright University of Rice in Houston, Texas. And it was a motivation for us to get the coin. This is a downy facility where the spacecraft was actually built. And this is a picture of the overall spacecraft. Uh, this uh, command module is uh, all that's on the top. It carried the astronauts. And the service module was the back was the thrust with that, the rockets, and uh, the important items that uh, fuel cells. And this is the overall view of the uh, all uh, uh, orbiting the uh, moon. This is a picture of the facility of Downey, where they actually built the spacecraft. This is a grid coordinate, so we know where we're at. And the map, we had a map that showed us the location for the grid coordinates. It would be numbered and lettered up and down. And there's the grid coordinates again. <coughs> this is building one, where the Apollo was actually made. Uh, the components, that's the, uh, these are model, models. And uh, these are boilerplates. And, uh, and this is a picture of uh, one of the space after the really command module. This is the heat shield being installed in, in uh, building one. And this is a complete assembly. This is what it looks like. And this is a, one of the command modules being tested and pressure tested for the free on the head in there. And uh, water glycol actually. And that was we missed the drop tank, and this one uh, test was run underneath the ground for the command module. And this is the covers they use on going between buildings. And this is building 288, which a lot of the internal components were, overall components were done, like the uh, pressure tests on the command module. And uh, heating it with these lights uh, to bake it a little bit. And, uh, And we had a clamshell to actually break the belt to heat, uh, bake the spacecraft. And this is again the f f uh, facility that shows the location of Building 6 and 290. And those are the main compo components for testing and engineering. Eng engineering was in Building 6. There were hundreds of engineers on the second floor. And we went to uh, Building 290 was actually where they did the testing, the final testing on uh, the bird itself. It's the external views of the building. Now we're going to the layout. The layouts, the middle part is the two high base and actually two base, and then we got uh, control on the one side and uh, some uh, components on the other side. It shows one of the stacks, uh, what they were labeled, and uh, here's to show the overall view inside, showing the stacks itself on the right of sand. And this is again another earlier view of that particular without the stacks. And uh, Here's one of the birds being twenty birds that were shook and uh, giving a test test on that. Again, we're back to this. Uh, these are the heat shells inside building 290, and the stacks are just behind behind it. And the stacks were important because they were that was used for testing, and they would put the uh, bird inside the stack and we look at test stands, and they would actually run a test between the control room, which is a uh, these are the badges we used there. Uh, we, uh, white badges were the engineers, and the solid colored badges were the technicians with the numbers on it. These are certification cards we had for different things like soldering, whatever. Uh, this uh, this is the only thing we had when we first started the Apollo. This chart they had on the wall made by GE. It gave an overall view what we had. Otherwise, we just had to rely on our drawings. And this is uh, one of the party we had there, birthday party for one of the girls. And this is another view of building 290. <coughs> and uh, some of the technicians working on in building 290 and next to one of the birds. Now these screws are strange screws. that You couldn't back them up. They were anti-theft screws. And they were supposed to use these things. But sometimes the guys bring your own in. And that was not a prediction. This is a, a kit they had with the uh, order and the uh, parts and screws and, uh, and the blueprints that would require it get this done. This is one of the components we started, installed in there. And uh, it went into that, Paul, into that uh, section there, one of the equipment bays, one of the lower equipment bay. This shows the internals there of the, some of the, of the lower equipment bay itself. And this is another, this is a tape recorder that went inside of there. Uh, one of the fellows took, bought one of these things and then they took it apart after, you know, they became surplus. And uh, this is another, where this particular item went inside. 
and uh, here it shows the cable here goes the window on Apollo 1. It's very primitive. Again, this is where they put the uh, insulation for the bird, it's a special jig for it. Then they would later on, put, after the bird was done, they put the uh, heat shields on when the bird, birds were complete. Um, just pictures of the heat shields. This is an earlier model here of heat shield. And, uh, and here they're putting in the cone in the funnel when the, when the bird was completely get, ready to get shipped out. Now this is a, uh, the service module. The service module had the rocket engine, the fuel, uh, the fuel for the rockets, and uh, they had the, the uh, batteries and things like that needed for the uh, command module. That, that they used. And this is a Apollo t 1, which is spacecraft 12 on the, on the ground here, and this is spacecraft 14, which is the sister to space, uh, a spacecraft 12. And this is a the integrated test that we were talking about, we were looking at. This is an important thing. They have this mount this this thing and we can connect, connect cables between it to the control rooms. And there's some learning the uh, spacecraft to the uh, integrated test stand, which we called the stacks at the time. And uh, here's another picture of the stacks. And so uh, that's uh, Apollo One. A very good view of it too. And uh, the next shot is one of the earlier ones. That was I think that's uh, spacecraft 009. It was an, un an unmanned orbiter. And this is kind of a close-up with the Apollo, where the hatch and the window is. And this is all the cabling would go into the top of the spacecraft, and cabling and uh, piping and tubing and whatever it was needed inside the spacecraft. And there's another view of it from the, with the covers that they put on, so to be so unsightly with all the cab cable that's coming in. <coughs> there's another view of it, and uh, here's uh, again going through the. Another view of, of the, the connections, and as you know, there was not enough room in there for everybody. There was only three people that could go in there. We had an inspector, and then we had some gal on the door to, to check for debris and stuff coming in and out of the bird. And uh, so we had to wait in line and to, to, for our turn, and we'd go in and do our job, and then the next guy would come in. So it took, you know, it was a time-consuming thing. We did as fast as we could. Now this is actual test going on. We had command modules. And uh, we had the control room in the t that was just adjacent to each other, but we had to use intercoms because we couldn't see each other. There was a wall between us. And uh, so this is a very important thing. Here's the uh, control room. It's very impressive. There's all these uh, monitors and uh, meters and things like that. And there's, it was driven by a computer, uh, a mainframe computer adjacent to this room. And they would test what they push a button on those consoles, and they would run an automatic test. And if there was something wrong, they'd have to stop the test or find out what was wrong in the room. Here's a picture of the uh, computer room uh, showing the mainframe computer. And this is the type of thing they had actually ran it. They'd have uh, tapes and things that were programmed to do this thing. This shows the, the sequence, how it goes. It goes from the, the uh, bird to the computer to the control room and back to the bird again in you know, like a big circle. So you have two different computers that were one input, one output. And this is a sequence we followed. Uh, they had procedures so we could know what we were doing. And uh, this is all planned out. And these inspection uh, we had, would uh, have a inspection for each line item. Again, this is a control room again, showing the, uh, one of those views of it with some of the engineers working there. And this is uh, some of the documentation we used. And this is the RF room, which was uh, used for when we were, had no cables in there. We let everything go through the RF room. And uh, this again, this is a picture of the computer room. And this is the war room, where all the planning was done by the, uh, the uh, management and uh, some of the engineers. And they would figure out what was going on. And they'd have plotting boards on the walls. And it was pretty sophisticated. And uh, they had scheduling. And we had meetings in there with all the bosses. And sometimes an astronauts would be in there too. And here's the plotting board that showed the sequence of that particular bird. They had several walls of it. Here's a TV camera so they could look at each other. We were looking at the command module. And here's the intercom set. It was, uh, it was not very good, but it worked. It uh, was noisy. And this is another room view of the uh, war room. And these are the fellows that worked on the uh, monitors in the control room. And these, uh, again, this is getting ready for final test here. 
and putting this thing together and uh, buttoning it up and uh, last final changes everything done and there was no chairs in there and then here's the uh, uh, Apollo astronauts from uh, Apollo 1 and they're taking viewing what's going on here and they would actually run the test with us and uh, there's a few of the final putting on the parachutes on the top before they butt it all up and they would put the heat shield on top of that and then from there now here's a photo op they had the bird was essentially all done I think they remember just, just testing some of the the suit to see if they worked okay with the, with the bird. And uh, from there they would be sh uh, shipped out to the, the next area, probably Cape Canaveral. <coughs> and uh, again, there's some pictures of the, of the astronauts coming and doing some photo ops. The thing was very impressive to have them go ahead and do that. And uh, here's the, where they finally kind of put in a lot of, lot of finishing touches here. And here's some autographs we got from the astronauts. Um, there was a party afterwards, and everybody got one of these sheets with the astronauts uh, for signing them on uh, the, on their pictures, which was Grissom, White, and Chafee. And there's a nice photo of them. Unfortunately, they were involved in an accident. And uh, here's the crew from the uh, first shift crew for the Apollo 1. The second shift sh shots are the, these uh, here. Actually, the one behind him is one, actually spacecraft 106. Well, uh, these technicians were using all the all the birds. We were all worked on all the different birds. And these are the engineers that worked on the Apollo also. Uh, and here's the shake test before it went out. Uh, they would shake it and they'd vacuum it and find all the debris that was inside of there. And uh, they had they'd find screws and all kinds of stuff in there. And here's a picture of all the debris. And uh, these screws here are not type they were supposed to be used there. Some technician brought them in and it's well got loose. And uh, this uh, some use of the spacecraft getting ready to be shipped. You know, <coughs> they're buttoning everything up now and uh, they'll cover it up and here they're putting the cover on there. This is one of the other birds they just use covers and they would ship it that way and then they put this other car cart like a container on top of it, and this is uh, one. Of, this is Apollo One being shipped off. And one of the guppy. And uh, this is the service module for that particular bird. It was going out, and they went through the out this big uh, door we had on the high bay in Billy Tonighty. And uh, as you can see, we got a transport here with it, and they ship it out to put to get to the guppy. And I think it was Long Beach they shipped them off of. And here's another view of the Apollo. They got a little more sophisticated after the Apollo 1 fire. They started using a better container like this one here. It's for the service module. And it's very sturdy it's compared to the earlier ones when you just had to just drape it around. And they're just showing one of the other more advanced birds. These were the Block 2 vehicles that were going out. And uh, here's some more pictures of the, the Block 2 vehicles going out. This picture of me when I was a young man working there. And uh, Here's the, the stacks would change, it got bigger and more better, and they were easy to run around before they were just individual. And here's Apollo 15, uh, I was working on that uh, other shot here, another shot of one of the other birds going out. And uh, I believe this is Apollo 7, and uh, I think the next one is Apollo 10. And then uh, after that, I'll, sh I'll show the uh, spacecraft 107, which is actually Apollo 11. They were they would name the spacecraft in the, when they were making them, and then they would assign them Apollo numbers uh, later on uh, when they're getting ready to ship. And they would be uh, actually when they put on the bird itself, was, uh, the final Apollo numbers. So these were the crews that worked on Apollo 11, which is the one that landed on the moon, went to the moon to, with a lunar module landed on the moon. And uh, there's quite a bit of crews that you can see. You can see. So they would first ship second shift and different type things that we're doing. This is the actual final assembly for the, for the uh, Apollo 11. That's, and this is the logo we had for the uh, Apollo 11 itself. And it's a, this is a launch of Apollo 11 showing the American flag on the side. A nice picture. And these are the Apollo 11 astronauts. They were, went to the moon. This is a sh shot of the uh, astronaut putting the American flag on the moon. And these were the six landings that were done on the moon itself. Uh, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.